Something that stands out to me in the account of the Savior's birth is that on four separate occasions, an angel appears with the message, Fear not. When the angel Gabriel appeared to Zacharias with news that his wife would bear a son, the forerunner of the Messiah, he said, Fear not, for thy prayer is heard. Later, the same angel visited beautiful and fair Mary to tell her that she would be the mother of the Son of God, assuring her with similar words, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Shortly thereafter, an angel appeared to Joseph the carpenter in a dream and said, Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. And then on that holy night, as all eternity watched in reverent silence, the angel came upon humble shepherds keeping watch over their flock. The shepherds, who were sore afraid, heard the angel proclaim, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. So much of what happened during those pivotal moments in the nativity narrative depended upon the courage of people like Zacharias, Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds. God had a monumental task for each of them. Their lives were about to change forever. Imagine if they had let fear overcome them. What if they had pulled back, doubted, and failed to do what God needed them to do? I don't know what your fears are. You may have fears about your family, like Zacharias, who feared that he would never have children. Or maybe your fear isn't that you won't have children, but that you will have children whom you have to raise in a toxic world, increasingly hostile to families. Like Mary, you may have an assignment or responsibility that seems far beyond your abilities. Like Joseph, you may fear getting married or that you will never get married. Like the shepherds, you may be sore afraid when your peaceful, simple life is disrupted because God has plans for you that are bigger than what you had for yourself. Life presents endless opportunities to fear. The Lord's message to you today is the same message he sent through his angels so long ago. Fear not. He can say that because he knows more than we do. He sees what we cannot see. He knows what's coming and in the eternal scheme of things, it's not as bad as we may think. He knows that we can handle it with his help because he knows how to strengthen and succor us. Satan wants us to give in to fear. God wants us to hold on to hope. I testify that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and because unto us was born that day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, we have no need to fear, for he has indeed brought with him peace on earth and goodwill toward men.